you're doing well. Ryan Jackson here. One of the questions that I get asked more than anything is, can you put the dishwasher and the disposal on the same circuit in a dwelling unit? And really, it's usually asked uh, in the conversation of dwelling units, but it could be a commercial occupancy as well. The answer is going to be the same. And it's found ultimately in section 210.23. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, now this is going to be based on the 2020 National Electrical Code, and there were some changes actually that, that kind of helped to clarify it a little bit. There's kind of some wordsmithing, but let's remember that we're talking about appliances first. So we need to go to Article 422, which is the appliance article. And before we get too deep, I, I need to kind of state an obvious issue. And that is, if the instructions say that you need an individual circuit, well, then you have to follow the instructions. Uh, ultimately, 422.6 for appliances tells us that all appliances supplied by 50 volts or more have to be a listed product. And if I go back, way back in the start of the codebook to section 110.3b, it tells us that equipment that is listed or labeled or both you have to follow any instructions that are included with the listing and labeling, which ultimately includes the manufacturer's instructions. So we have to follow the manufacturer's instructions if the product is listed. 422.6 says the products do have to be listed because they're appliances, so we need to follow instructions. So if the instructions say that you have to put it on its own circuit, well then obviously you have to, and, and that's the end of the discussion. But if the directions do not uh, tell us how to circuit it, then we use the code book. And we're going to start with section 422.10. It says the conductor and capacity. Now, the, this is for individual circuits because we're going to read both. If we read this and we find out that no, we cannot put them on the same circuit, well, then that means they're going to be on their own circuit. So let's read what those rules would require. So for individual circuits for an appliance, the conductor and capacity must not be less than the appliance's marking. And if you're using it in a continuous application, which is three hours or more at peak current, then the ampacity must be at least 125% of the appliance's marking. So let's take a peek here. Here I've got this appliance. It doesn't matter what it is. It's a hot air fryer, but, you know, pretend that i got a circuit that's, you know, individual circuit for it. And it is 1,500 watts at 120 volts. So we do the math, 1,500 watts divided by 120 volts. That's a 12.5 amp load. So if this was not a continuous load, then I could use 14 gauge wire because of course 14 gauge wire is good for 12.5 amps. If this was a continuous load, meaning that I use it at its peak rating for three consecutive hours, then I'm gonna take my 12 and a half amps times 125%. That would require a conductor with 15.6 amp, uh, amperes of ampacity and that would be a 12 gauge conductor. So that's assuming that we're using the 60 degree column. If I'm using NM cable, Romex, 334.80 says you have to use the 60 degree ampacity. 110.14C says that for circuits 100 amps or less, you have to use the 60 degree ampacity unless your terminations say 75 degrees. And, and we don't know what our terminations are, so we're just going to assume 60 degree ampacities. If it's a continuous load, I would need 12 gauge. Non-continuous load, I could use 14 gauge. Now again, that's if it's just on its own circuit. If I keep reading, it says for motor operated appliances that are not marked with a rating, then Article 430 is used for conductor ampacity. All right, now this is really important and this is a potential pitfall. Usually, appliances are marked, not motor operator appliances, are marked not just with their horsepower, but also with an ampere rating. Because if we're being perfectly honest, manufacturers kind of lie a little bit about the horsepower rating because the horsepower rating is what the customer wants to know, right? If, I, if I'm buying a, a, a garbage disposal, man, I want a one horsepower. I want to be able to put anything I want down there. Is it really a, a one horsepower motor that you're getting? No. No, not if you compare the amperes to known horsepower rating. So this says it's 120 volt, one horsepower. That should pull like 15 amps. It doesn't, it pulls 10, because it's not one horse. So if it's marked with the rating, then you use the rating. Now, this is only for appliances. Don't get confused with Article 430, 
and start taking a motor and doing this with it. Uh, 430.6A, read that if you're doing motors and read the third exception if you're doing appliances. All right, so for motor operator appliances that are not marked with a rating, then we use Article 430. We don't have to use Article 430 because this says 10 amps. All right, now, what if I do not have an individual circuit, right? Can we put the dishwasher and the disposer on the same circuit? Well, for branch circuits, supplying an appliance plus something else, then we're going to use section 210.23. That could be an appliance plus another appliance. That could be an appliance plus lighting or plus receptacles or what have you. We would go to section 210.23. Now, I wanna just kind of pause for a second here and tell you that if this is one of those where the more you know the code, the worse your chances are of getting this right. Because if you're used to doing motors, you're gonna say right off the bat, you're gonna say, well, look, if I have two motors on a circuit, I take 125% of the biggest motor plus 100% of the other motor, and that's how I size my conductors. Okay, that does not apply to, appliance, to motor operated appliances. Nowhere have we read that it says to do that. So it doesn't apply. We just go to 210.23, and 210.23 also does not tell us to take 125% of the biggest motor plus 100% of the other motor. What 210.23 says is this. It says the load must not exceed the branch circuit rating, first and foremost. All right, so you're not allowed to put 30 amps of load on a 20 amp circuit, obviously. Circuit supplying more than one outlet or more than one receptacle must comply with section 210.23A through D. Now, I'm going to tell you that A, B, C, and D are not going to apply to a circuit that just has a dishwasher and disposal. If I have the dishwasher and the disposal on the same circuit and nothing else, then the question is answered in that sentence right there. The load must not exceed the branch circuit rating. Now, if I have other stuff on this circuit as well, can I put my kitchen lights on that circuit? That's where we're gonna have to read 210.23a through, through d, and we're gonna find out the answer to that is probably no. But for just a dishwasher and disposer, they're both fixed equipment, 210.23, before you get to a, is the only thing you need to know. So let's take a peek. Here I've got my three-quarter horse, uh, Appliance, my, my uh, disposer, doesn't matter what the horsepower rating is, right? Because it's marked with its load, 9.5 amps. I couldn't get to my dishwasher to take a picture of it, so I just pulled one off the internet. But this one says that it was 6.6 .6 amps. All right, so all I have to do is take my 6.6 .6 amps plus my 9.5 amps, that equals 16.1. Obviously, I can't put it on a 15 amp circuit. Could I put it on a 20 amp circuit? The answer is yes. You could put the dishwasher and the disposer on a 20 amp circuit and you're done. I have heard all sorts of bizarre answers to this question. I've heard people say that you, if you wanted to do it, you'd have to have like a three-way switch <laughs> for the dishwasher and disposal so you could only run one at the same time or you'd have to run them through a relay or something weird. No, that, that's not required, man. 210.23 before you get to A through D is all you need to know. Now, let's keep talking about 210.23, and we'll make this make a little bit more sense. 210.23a, 15 and 20 amp branch circuits. For 15 and 20 amp branch circuits, those can supply lighting or utilization equipment or both. Well, that's good, because here in this photograph, we have lighting and the motor is utilization equipment. So if this didn't, you know, if it said it can only supply one or the other, then you'd have to have two circuits for a ceiling fan. So yeah, obviously it can supply lighting, utilization, equipment, or both. But here's where people start to get confused. 210.23 A1 and A2. A1 is for cord and plug connected equipment that is not fastened in place, like this portable drill press. All right, an individual cord and plug connected piece of equipment that is not fastened in place is limited to 80% of the circuit rating. Okay, cool. So here I've got a 15 amp circuit. That means the biggest drill press I could have is what? 12 amps. If I had a 13 amp drill press, I'd have to have it on a 20 amp circuit. 
And if I took 20 amps times 0.8, that would be 16 amps, so we'd be compliant, right? So that's for cord and plug connected equipment that's not fastened in place. Now, my dishwasher and disposal are fastened in place. You're gonna need to have tools to get those things out. So I don't have to worry about A1. For equipment that is fastened in place, this is the rule. The load on an individual fixed piece of equipment, other than lights, must not exceed 50% of the circuit rating, but keep reading, if lighting, portable equipment, or both are also on the same circuit. My dishwasher and disposer of both fixed equipment. This sentence does not apply. This says the load of one piece of fixed equipment must not exceed 50% of the rating of the circuit if you have lights, portable equipment, or both on the same circuit. So let's do an example. Here I've got this saw back here and it's fixed in place. If there are other loads on this circuit, lights or whatever, that are not fixed in place, right? So either lighting or portable loads, then this would be limited to seven and a half amps total on a 15 amp circuit, or it would be limited to 10 amps on a 20 amp circuit. If you also had lights or portable equipment on the circuit. What if I had two pieces of fixed equipment on the same circuit and nothing else? Then you just add the two nameplates together and you walk away. That's the rule, just like for a dishwasher and disposer. By the way, I'm noticing myself saying disposal and disposer. The real name is disposer. If you go to 422.16, it talks about in-sync waste disposers. I just haven't trained myself to say disposer yet. So give me some time and I'll, I'll say it right. You should have seen me when we changed from light fixture to luminaire. That was a lot worse. All right, so let's do an example here. I've got a dust collector on the left and it is 10 amps. Got a marking, don't have to worry about the horse. On the right, I've got a sander, a belt sander, and the load on it is five amps. Don't need to worry about the horsepower because again, these are appliances. So. The dust collector is portable. I can move it around from tool to tool. The sander though is fixed in place. This came from my garage. I'm not making these up. The dust collector is portable. The sander is fixed. So can they be on the same 20 amp circuit? Well, you've got one fixed piece of equipment plus other stuff. So what are the rules? On the sander, 20 amp circuit, the maximum load is 10 amps because the fixed piece of equipment must not exceed 50% of the rating if you have lights and other portable equipment. Here we have the dust collector. What's the maximum load that it can be? Well, I would go back to 210.23A1. For portable equipment, it's not allowed to exceed 80% of the circuit rating. So I could have a maximum 16 amp dust collector, maximum 10 amp sander, but of course, between the two of them put together, I'm not allowed to exceed 20 amps. You can't put 25 amps worth of stuff on a 20 amp circuit, obviously. So you've got three rules to consider here. The total rating of the circuit must not be less than the total sum of the appliances. The fixed in place piece of equipment must not exceed 50% if you have lights or portable loads. And the uh, portable load must not exceed 80% of the rating of the circuit. I know this is one of the toughest sections in the code, it really is. Equipment fastened in place, same section here. We can look at my bandsaw here and we can say, okay, does this need an individual branch circuit or could this be on a circuit with other stuff that's fastened in place or not fastened in place? Well, I can definitely do an individual branch circuit. 14 amps, I could put that on a 15 amp branch circuit. Now that's cutting it close, but again, that's not a continuous load. I don't run my bandsaw for three hours. Uh, wish I had time to do that, but I don't. So it's not a continuous load. There is no 125% for this motor operator appliance because 422 does not require that. So I could put it on a 15 amp circuit and we'd be good to go. But if it was on a 20 amp circuit, could I put lights or other loads on it, other portable loads? No, because then I would be limited to 50% of the circuit, 14 amp load would require a 30 amp circuit. So yeah, I could not put this on a 20 amp circuit with other loads. 
I could not put it on a 15 amp circuit with other loads. I can put it on a dedicated individual 15 amp circuit or an individual 20 amp circuit. Now again, when I say other loads, I mean portable loads and non-lighting loads. Could I put this bandsaw on a 20 amp circuit and also have a fixed piece of equipment right next to it that drew two amps? Yes, I could, as long as they were both fixed in place, because that would be the same as the dishwasher and disposer issue, right? Just add the two name plates together if they're both fastened in place and you don't have lights or portable loads on the circuit. I promise that's the hardest part of 210.23. The rest of it's easy. But while we're here, let's talk about it. 30 amp circuits. 30 amp circuits can supply lighting with heavy duty lamp holders in other than dwelling units, or it can supply other equipment in any occupancy. All right, so obviously we allow 30 amp circuits even in residential because you got a dryer. Right, so yeah, you can have 30 amp circuits. If you want to put your lights on a 30 amp circuit, they have to have heavy duty lamp holders. And what we're talking about here would be lamp holders that you'd find on like a, uh, oh boy, what do you call these? Like a metal halide, you know, high pressure sodium, something like that. Uh, if you've got tube fluorescent lights, can you put those on a 30 amp circuit, even if you run 10 gauge wire? No, those are uh, the tombstones on the end of them, the lamp holders, those are not uh, those are not heavy duty. So you do have some limitations on 30 amp circuits. Cord and plug connected load must not exceed 80% of the rating of the circuit. So you are limited to 24 amps on a 30 amp circuit if you've got cord and plug connected equipment. 40 and 50 amp circuits. 40 or 50 amp circuits can supply fixed cooking equipment in any occupancy. You know, obviously you got a range in your house. In other than dwelling units, they can supply heavy duty lamp holders. This would require a heavy duty lamp holder as well as other loads too. Once you get over 50 amps, uh, that's anything but lights. All right, so you can't have lighting on a 60 amp or greater branch circuit. All right, so there you go. Um, can you put the dishwasher and disposer on the same circuit? The answer is almost certainly yes. The only time that you couldn't is when. Well, if the instructions say you can't, then you can't, obviously. If you also have lights and other portable loads on the circuit, then you can't do it either. And of course, if your dishwasher plus disposer nameplate exceeded the rating of your branch circuit, that would be a violation as well. So I'm willing to say that you could sometimes put it on a 15 amp circuit, you can probably always put it on a 20 amp circuit. Again, provided you comply with 210.23. All right, are you confused enough yet? I hope not. 210.23 is a brutal section. It's a really tough code section. You have to read it a hundred times. So I hope you enjoyed this. Take a second if you would and hit the thumbs up button on uh, YouTube. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do that too so you don't miss any of my free electrical content. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please be safe out there. See you next time. Hi everyone, Ryan Jackson. Just grab it.